Hi, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. I, what you're looking at right now is pure clay. This clay was harvested from a large wash around the corner. Our neighbor's midlife prices, I want to thank Pam and Brian. They said I could uh, take as much clay as we need. And this is, there are areas in the wash where you will find large clumps like this collected, sitting as little islands almost on the sand and it is pure clay. So what I'm going to do is run that through our quarter inch screen and reduce it to a clay powder. And that's getting added to our cob, cob and earthen plaster mix at the rate of about one gallon dry of powdered clay to two five gallon buckets of our soil here on the property and about two gallons of water. So, I'm going to get sifting. Okay, so here's the result of running that clay through a quarter inch hardware cloth. These small pebbles that you see here, that's pure clay still. It is not gravel or any other kind of kind of aggregate, it's clay. It's just small enough that it made it through the screen. Anyways, so this amount that we have here will probably be enough to do, I'm guessing anywhere from five to eight batches of cob. And that one gallon dry of clay added to our mixture made all the difference. Really made it creamy and gave it a nice sticky consistency. Anyways, so that's it for sifting clay. This is our new cob mixture. We have two buckets of dirt from our property. We have one uh, large container of clay. It's actually a protein powder, empty protein powder can canister. And uh, two gallons of water. And about a third of a bucket of chop straw, a third of a five gallon bucket of chopped straw. And what we found is for the first coat or the scratch coat of plaster, we like it, it's going, it's adhering to the straw bales much better when it's wet. That That's really the consistency of a very firm cement, I, I would call it, a, a, a firm mixture of cement. Uh, or a firm mixture of stucco. But we found that that is really adhering. When it gets any firmer than this, it just repels off of the straw bales. Like, it just it just won't adhere. This is really doing a great job. Let me show you something inside here. So this is, this is Yvonne's work from today. And there are a total of three batches of our uh, earthen plaster, just like what you saw in the bucket. And it's really adhering beautifully. It's really going on great. So this is the first coat. And then there'll be subsequent coats after this to finish it off. So here's Yvonne's technique that she's developed. She's uh, determined that smaller handfuls Go ahead and show us how it's done. Uh -huh. And she's kind of just rubbing it in with the heel of her hand. Now when it's firmer than this, I can promise you, you put it on and it just falls off. Plus, I think I was trying to apply it too thick. So she's really doing a, more or less a skim coat and uh, really getting the straw to bond with the plaster and it's just working out fantastic. The girl is one with earthen plaster. <laughs> it's really fun. 
I really like this. <laughs> it's yeah, satisfying. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. Because we're gonna have a whole house to do. Bring it on. Woo! I had the challenge. The gauntlet has been thrown down. The house just went from 600 to 900 square feet. Yay! <laughs> it's Friday afternoon, and I just wanted to do a quick update because some interesting things have taken place yesterday and today. First of all, you're looking at the inside of the solar shed. Yvonne has really got a technique down as far as getting the first coat of earthen plaster to stick to the straw. So that went along rather well. What you're looking at is about the walls from the floor to the, the cob from the floor to where it ends is about six feet. And this wall from here to the corner is about, I'd call it eight feet. And then this is also eight feet. So this was a total of six batches of cob or earthen plaster so and it took I'd say once we got the recipe down and Yvonne really hit her stride with her technique it was probably four or five four hours five hours total to do this she was cooking right along and the first we've determined oh we also have this lower area here is also done the uh, we've determined that the first coat is going to be the most difficult getting it to stick to the straw is uh is probably the most requires the most technique and the most precise uh recipe so we also have now the chicken wire has been installed over all of these bays and we have a big surprise if you recall from a video i did about two weeks ago i demoed a neighbor's carport and she had an extra window Ba -da -ba -da -ba. man oh man so three feet by four feet so this may change the whole idea we have with regards to how we're going to finish the outside i apologize for the wind but i want to show it to you from the outside so here's what we've got now so i just had to do a little reframing and that's what i've been doing this morning and we now have a beautiful three foot by four foot non-operable picture window but it's on the north side of the building which is kind of nice it'll give us good light without uh, allowing too much heat in so that's pretty much what's going on right now we're just going to finish up preparing the other surfaces with chicken wire it's almost all done as you can see but we're kind of now rethinking what we're going to do is because we have this additional light is we're probably going to cob this in this upper triangle which we earlier thought we were going to do plexiglass to provide light and then what we're going to do is we're thinking on the other side over here which is the west side we're going to do bottle bricks colorful bottle bricks that'll be kind of a little bit of a stained glass effect in the setting sun so it's starting to take shape and it's also kind of fun to be spontaneous and make changes that's the one thing that's nice about this building uh tech these building techniques and styles is that uh you really can be spontaneous you can change your mind make adjustments and it all works out anyways that's it for today have a great weekend this is bill from the upside of downsizing we'll catch you in the next video